Shook it up. So today I am doing a bit of a different video. It's been long overdue. It's probably one of the videos that I should have done like three and a half years ago when I first started making YouTube videos. I think it's going to be quite difficult for me personally to talk about a lot of these things because I haven't really talked about these before with anyone and it's been kind of something that's been in my head. I think that me sharing what I've been through might help some other people like get through tough times themselves and see that there is light at the end of the tunnel and that you can get through these situations. So just a quick disclaimer, I am not condoning anything that I did in the past. I'm not saying that anything I have done was the right thing to do. If anything, I'm saying it was the opposite. I don't know why this is so difficult. I thought it'd be really easy. I'm literally just going through the timeline of my life and my fitness journey. The reason I'm recording this today, my fitness journey, is because right now I'm going through a bit of a rough patch. I've been feeling a little bit down about myself and I just thought that maybe it might help me and um, get through my own rough patch to look back on how far I've come and to kind of talk about things that have happened previously. I'm just going to start because I'm kind of dragging out this intro a bit too much and making it a little bit too dramatic. Like it's nothing sordid or disturbing that you're going to hear. It's probably normal to a lot of people and I just want to share what I've been through um, with you guys so that you get a better grasp of what I've been through, where I am now and where I'd like to be. So as many of you may know if you've been following me for a while, my name is Lainey, I'm Irish and I live here in the UK. I grew up in a small town in the Midlands of Ireland. I grew up in a very normal Catholic Irish family. I had two older sisters, a younger sister, and when I was about 11, my mum had my younger brother. So big Irish family, very close with all our cousins, because that's kind of an Irish thing, like your cousins are like your siblings. My parents owned their own business, they worked for themselves, they were always quite busy, but they did everything they could to give us everything we wanted. So I never thought that we were like poor or anything like that. Until I look back on it now, we probably didn't have a lot of money, but at the time I never thought we were poor or, you know, struggled with money. I just thought we were like a normal family like everyone else, which we probably were because it was Ireland in the 80s. So growing up, um, my mum and dad, they would drive us to every class possible. My parents were like a glorified taxi service, really. They would bring us to, there was four girls, all doing ballet, all doing gymnastics, some of us did horse riding, some of us played tennis, some of us played basketball and literally it was just a timetable of bringing us to and from all these different classes. My favourite thing growing up was ballet. Ballet was what I really loved and enjoyed and I did that from when I was about two because I had two older sisters they were already doing ballet so I was like a toddler in my nappy like doing plies and stuff at the back of my sister's class to the point where my ballet teacher Annika was just like you know what just send her send her next year so I was really young starting ballet I was probably only about three and I always loved it it was where I had all my best friends in life and it was where I kind of got to express myself because coming from a big family you know you might not be heard especially when I was a middle child and I had serious middle child syndrome I was always looking for attention so being in ballet I got to express all my emotions and my feelings as you know a little creative child so my upbringing was pretty normal up on stage of 12. Now at 12 my eldest sister was killed in a car accident it kind of shook my entire family when my sister died it just obviously it was a freak accident and I didn't realise at the time, but I felt like I blamed myself and I always wondered why it had been her instead of me and I personally felt that it would have been better if it had been me rather than my sister. I know that's a crazy thing to think, but that's how I always felt as a person, that why was she taken away and I was left behind. Left with all these emotions as a 12 year old 
just turning into my teens, into adolescence, I had a lot of these pent up emotions that I didn't know how to deal with. And to be honest, I just put them to the back of my mind and concentrated on what normal teenagers concentrate on, which is boys and trying to make friends and trying to fit in. Because I grew up in a small town, I was always known as the girl whose sister had died. And that kind of stuck with me throughout school. So moving on, um, because we are talking about my fitness journey, but this does kind of correlate in with it, that I had this loss when I was 12 and I just put it back to the back of my head. I worked really hard in school. I worked really hard on my ballet. In the final years of school, I was going to ballet classes four or five times a week. I'd finish school on a Friday, I'd do my homework, and then I would go out to my ballet school for the entire weekend where I would just dance and practice. And I just wanted to be a dancer. I applied to uh, universities in the UK that um, to do a degree in dance combined with a degree in biomedical science. So would have been a joint degree it would have been very very full-on I did the audition I got into the school and then when it came down to it I opted out of doing dance and went for a straight degree in biomedical science this was when I was 18 and I just opted to stay in Ireland I just wasn't ready to make that move to the UK as an 18 year old when I started university like everyone else you have this new sense of freedom I cut off all my hair I pierced my lip I pierced my eyebrow and you know I had this new sense of freedom where I could go out on a Wednesday night and go drinking with my friends and it wouldn't matter and for the first time ever I didn't have my ballet commitments. I found a boyfriend who I was madly in love with. It was a really destructive relationship. It wasn't good at all. And at this time as well, I didn't have the comforts of home of my mum cooking my food for me. I wasn't doing the same activity levels as I was doing when I was in school. As a result, I just started to pile on the weight. And when I say pile on the weight, I put on like two stone, like 28 pounds in the space of a year. I went from being a UK size eight to being a UK size 14. That was in the space of one year of just eating all the wrong foods. Like I'm talking about like Mars bars for breakfast, Yorkies for lunch, and um, big baguettes filled with like crispy chicken and mayonnaise and all the wrong things like deep fried foods, Chinese food, and just eating completely all the wrong food. I had never had a problem with food growing up because my parents always provide me with really healthy food. Even if I did eat crap, it balanced out because I was doing so much ballet that the activity balanced out the food. So it was like the calories in versus calories out when I was in school. But as soon as I went to uni, I obviously cut out all that ballet and just start eating junk food. And like, I just thought I could eat whatever I wanted. It was like this freedom. I could eat whatever I wanted. But then gradually I saw my clothes were getting tighter on me. I was in this really bad relationship. He would poke at the fat on the sides. He'd put his arm around me and pull at the fat on the side of my body. He made me feel like so crappy. And it's horrible to think that someone like that had that power over me. So that first summer that I was dating him, I decided to go home for the summer. And again, being back in my comfort zone, I was back in my parents' house. I had a job in a local factory in the lab and I was away from him for the summer. I used to see him maybe once every couple of weekends. And that space away, I joined Weight Watchers with my mum. So I started counting my points. I joined a gym, which I didn't really know what I was doing, but I was doing something in the gym. I go on the treadmill and I try and use some of the weights. And I used to do like 100 sit-ups before I went to bed every night. And I gradually started dropping the weight again. So the weight fell off me in that summer. I looked great, I felt great. But then straight away, I went back to university. The cycle of eating crap just started to seep in again. I was quite lazy, I'd get the bus and I didn't go to the gym, I didn't do any activities. My college course was getting really intense and there was a lot of work involved. There was like 36 hours of lectures a week, let alone all the studying I had to do outside of that. It was like continual exams and it was a five year course. So I had five years of this intense study where I just didn't have time to concentrate on me and I really wish 
that I had discovered the gym back then and took that time for myself. But instead, I just immersed myself in my studies and nutrition and exercise just took a back seat. So I eventually broke up with the boyfriend. I broke the cycle, I broke up with him and I met a really, really nice, good guy. He thought I was just amazing. It didn't matter if I was fat, if I was thin. He just thought I was funny and I was um, a good person. So when I met him, I knew I was on the right track because he just made me feel good about myself again. So I met this amazing guy, I was 21, I was having an amazing summer, living with my friends, and I felt like I was getting back on track with my life and my self-worth. But unfortunately, that was when tragedy hit my family again. My cousin, who was only a year older than me, who I was really close with, who I'd grown up with, gone to school with, he drowned in a freak swimming accident in Barcelona that summer. And when I got that news, it, it literally destroyed me. It just... It, it took the life out of me. I just, I felt like my whole life was out of control. And I got all these feelings and all these emotions that I kind of bottled down for like nine years from when my sister died. I just had, and they all came up to the surface and I started dealing with all this grief again. And I didn't know how to deal with it. And when it happened, the only thing I could do was sit and eat and it was the only thing that kind of comforted me. I had this amazing guy, this amazing boyfriend. He would bring me out for nice meals. I'm only a small petite girl and I would eat the same amount as him. So he'd eat a pizza, I'd eat a pizza. He'd eat like a big pub meal of a burger and chips and I'd eat it. And I just started, the, the weight started to creep back on me again. And I just started to feel lack of self-worth and the weight was creeping back on me and on me. And again, I wasn't doing any exercise. I wasn't doing anything to counteract it. I just felt like everything was out of control. The only thing I had was this really nice boyfriend. But apart from that, I just felt like my whole life had spiraled out of control. So when I finished university, I qualified, I got an honors degree, I did really well. I still had this amazing boyfriend, but I also had these extra 20 pounds that I gained again in university. So I gained this weight twice in university. I used to call it my happy weight, but it wasn't really happy weight. It was actually like a way of coping with how I felt. So instead of feeling this emptiness inside, I would just like eat. And I'm sure loads of you feel that way, that sometimes when you feel empty, you just have to eat. It's strange because later on in life, all I wanted to feel was empty. But at this point, I just wanted to feel full and I wanted to feel happy. And it was very hard to fill the void that had been left through my grief. I was looking at this photo from this wedding we'd been at and my arms were wrapped around my ex-boyfriend in a photo and I always thought that it was my legs that were fat but in this photo I had big chunky fat arms and I was so embarrassed that that was the way I looked in this photo I was embarrassed by how I looked so I decided when I start working that I would join Weight Watchers again. So this time I took it really seriously. I was counting all my points. I was saving up my points for the weekend so I could have food with my boyfriend. And I was also saving for a house at the time. So that was my focus. I was like focused on losing weight, getting this amazing life. I was going to be this thin, successful woman who bought a house with her boyfriend and had this amazing life and I could just forget about all the shitty stuff that had happened in the past. Every week I was um, checking in at Weight Watchers meetings and I was dropping the weight every week and it just it just dropped off me because that's what it does like you're you're restricting your body you're putting it into a deficit and it definitely does work but I just got addicted to seeing the weights drop on the scales. I got addicted to it. I wanted to see it go lower and lower. And at the time, all I saw was these skinny, amazing girls. And that's all I wanted to be. I wanted to be skinny. I wanted to be thin. I wanted to be like the girls from Sex and the City. Sarah Jessica Parker had this tiny petite frame, Courtney Cox and Jennifer Aniston. And they were all these like really thin, amazing looking girls. And I just wanted to be thin. That was like my main goal was to be thin. So I started cutting down my points to the point where I was surviving on very, very little food. I would have maybe an apple at breakfast. I would drink Diet Coke at lunch, maybe a cappuccino at lunch, but like I was counting every calorie from that cappuccino. Then dinner time, again, I might have an apple. I restricted my food so 
much and the weight did fall off me and I remember my sister was getting married I was going to be chief bridesmaid so I just stopped eating like I literally was eating barely any food just enough to survive I remember going out for lunch with my sister and we had soup and a sandwich and all I ate was like a bite of the sandwich and I didn't even have the soup and it just got to a point where I hated going anywhere with my boyfriend because there was always going to be some kind of food involved if we went furniture shopping for the house we were buying you know we'd end up going and get a coffee and a scone or a cake and I just didn't want to I didn't want to be exposed to food I didn't want to be around food I didn't want anything to do with food so I literally starved myself and I was tiny I lost so much weight I was doing no exercise so it was literally just through starvation my bridesmaid dress that was bought just had to be taken in four times because I was so tiny and I just did not eat at the time even at my sister's wedding I didn't eat the food I didn't eat the cake I didn't drink I just like all I cared about was being thin so after my sister's wedding I thought that maybe then oh, I'll start eating again but I didn't it just got worse I was really focused on being thin and staying thin I remember going out and this was the first time it ever happened to me I'd started making a lot of money in my job I'd started doing on-call work which gave me a big jump in my salary so I had all this extra income coming in and a lot of the friends that I had they liked to go to the fancy restaurants in Dublin and I remember going to this restaurant and because I didn't eat I had such a small stomach so we went out for this meal and it was just a regular three course meal and I got to the dessert and I felt so full I felt full up to here that I ran to the bathroom and I just threw up the entire meal it made myself sick because I just felt so full and that was the first time I remember making myself throw up from food so I'd gone from eating nothing to eating a massive big meal and just throwing it up and that was the first experience I had with that of purging my food and from that I just remember thinking oh that was cool and it isn't cool I'm not encouraging anyone to do this but I just felt like I'd eaten that big meal and I was able to get rid of it so I didn't have the guilt of it I remember my diet for a while was that I would eat an apple in the morning a scone at lunchtime and then a bowl of cereal and that's what I ate all day. I bought a house with my ex-boyfriend and we were waiting for it to be completed. It was bought off the plans. So in the meantime, I was renting a room in a house. So I was quite alone, I was quite isolated. So every day I'd go home, I would eat a bowl of cereal. I would stand on my stepper and step, step, step. And then I'd go to bed early, get up and repeat the same thing over and over again. And then any time I felt like I was going to eat a big meal, I would just have that safety net of, oh, I can just throw it up afterwards. So that was my thing. That was my new way of dealing with food. So when I moved into my new house, everything seemed to be coming together. I was like, okay, I've got my shit together. I'm really thin. I've got a good job. I've got a really nice house, a really nice car, a really amazing boyfriend. Everything is finally coming together. And that's when my parents separated. And that again was something that was completely out of my control and I didn't know how to deal with the emotions of it because technically it wasn't my choice, it was their choice and you know they needed to do it, they weren't happy together but it just affected me because I had just had this amazing experience of buying my first house, my first boyfriend and then it was balanced with this negativity of my parents hating each other and not wanting to be around each other and hearing all the drama unfold each week. My coping mechanism, again, I just took it to another extreme and that was when I started purposefully buying bags and bags full of chocolate and i just buy a huge bag full of chocolate and I would just eat it and throw it all up again. It became a habit of once a week I'd do this and then where I moved to in my new house there was a gym close by and if I had like a slip up or what I considered a slip up of eating like a candy bar I would go to the gym and literally walk or run on the treadmill until I burned the calories that I'd just eaten and it was this extremeness of me wanting to counteract anything I ate because I just wanted to be thin all this time I, I was so focused on myself my relationship was not making me happy anymore food wasn't make, being thin wasn't making me happy anymore nothing was making me happy anymore so I ended up breaking up with the guy I'd been seeing for six years he got a job in 
another country which like destroyed me and I didn't know how to deal and I literally just sank into a really bad depression and it was at this point where I ended up having to take time off work and I was taking antidepressants, I was taking Xanax for my anxiety because I was getting really bad panic attacks at the time and I didn't know how to deal with them. I didn't even realise that they were panic attacks at the time. I literally thought I was having a stroke because I used to feel frozen and like I couldn't move and that everything was happening around me. I couldn't speak. It was like the most surreal experience ever and it was at that point where I was medicated for my depression and I really did feel like my world was just crumbling around me and I had no control over anything. I had no control over life, I had no control over myself, over my food and that was where my bulimia just got out of control because not only did I start binging and purging, I also was taking an excessive amount of laxatives so that I just wanted to feel empty. I just didn't want to feel anything anymore. I didn't want to feel happy. I didn't want to feel sad. I wanted to just feel nothing. It was my way of coping and it was the wrong way of coping. If anyone is feeling the way I felt then, it's, it's not nice and it, it really feels like you have, you have no one to talk to because you're so ashamed of yourself. You know that what you're doing is wrong and to be honest, I've never ever told anyone about this before. So it is like surprising that I'm sitting here in front of a camera. I wanted to tell them so bad because I felt so crappy about myself. I just wanted to, it was almost like I was trying to harm myself so that someone would see it and reach out to me and go, are you okay? But I had these friends and I had my family, but I just didn't, even though I wanted them to say it to me, I didn't at the same time because I felt like this was my way of coping with all the crap that was going on in my life and had gone on in my life. At this point, I met another guy and I started dating him and he was completely the wrong person for me, but he was fun and we'd go out, we'd party and we'd drink a lot. And to be honest, it took me away from being obsessed with food because he loved to be fun with food and he loved to just eat what he wanted and have fun and he didn't care if I was fat or he didn't care if I was thin he didn't care anything about that and it was for the first couple of months it was like a really fun relationship and it made me forget about all the binging and the you know, bulimia and anorexia and I just didn't do that. I just ate and I just had fun. But again, the weight just crept back on me because I wasn't doing any exercise. It wasn't balancing out. So it got to a point where all the partying started catching up on me because every weekend it was a big party weekend. We drank loads and then I'd spend the week recovering. So after a year of partying constantly, I ended up being really sick with a bad flu. And I was out sick for a week, a week and a half. And so my mum rang me and she's like, you need to start looking after yourself. So I booked myself in to get a massage and a facial just to relax and to look after myself. While I was getting this massage, the girl who was massaging me, she was saying, oh, you know, I do bodybuilding and I do weight training. I have this amazing coach and you know, you should go to him. So I got this guy's number off her and I texted him and I booked in for a week of personal training. Now this guy was like a proper bodybuilder and I'd never really lifted weights properly before in my life. Monday to Friday, I had five sessions and on each day he went through a different body part with me. After the week, he said, usually girls quit after the first week because they're so sore. So after the first week, every part of my body ached. It ached, like I literally, I couldn't even use the remote controls to change the TV but I felt like I'd have cheesed something. In that week, I felt a change in myself. I was like, I want to change. I'm sick of feeling you're obsessed about food. I started seeing him every week for five sessions a week. Now, as I got better and I knew more what exercise to be doing every day, these PT sessions went from five times a week to three to two, but I was still going into the gym five days a week. And then I was going into the gym every day after work. It was just my way going in and relieving the tension. I just went in, I lifted weights. There was no cardio involved. It was literally just lift weights. 
within about six weeks, I started to see a difference. And that's when I started cleaning up my diet a bit as well. So instead of having a big baguette at lunch packed with like crispy chicken or something like that, I was, I was bringing in packed lunches every day. I was having chicken and rice and sweet potatoes. And every day I was coming home and I was cooking these healthy stir fries and eating chicken and sweet potato and salmon. And I just started eating healthier. I didn't make a conscious decision to eat healthier. It just started happening. I just wanted to change. I started drinking more water and that was the point where I stopped going out at the weekends because when I went out and I drank with my friends then I was hung over on a Sunday and when I was hung over I couldn't go to the gym and I was like screw that I love the gym so I gave up drinking not a conscious choice but because I didn't want to be hung over and miss my gym session because I loved my Sunday gym session that was when the gym just started taking over and within a couple of months I started to look really good I had cleaned up my diet I wasn't drinking and partying anymore and I was going to the gym like almost seven days a week I just loved it now I had never I didn't even know what any of the big bodybuilders were. I'd never even seen a bodybuilding show. I didn't even know that girls could compete in them. And then I saw that there's this bikini category. So girls who were like just slim and they had like nice abs, nice legs, nice shoulders, and they got all dolled up, they got their hair done. I've been training about four or five months and I definitely start to see huge changes. So I asked my coach, can I do a competition? He looked at me and said, no, I don't think you'll be ready. And I remember going home and crying because he said no. I just didn't like the fact that he said no when I thought I was doing so amazingly well. So I kept on training and eating the same as I always had. I wasn't focusing on doing the competition, but then again, at about 10 weeks out from this competition that was coming up, I asked him again and he said, oh, well, we'll continue on and I'll coach you for it, but you still might not be able to do it. I started to focus more. I was getting up and doing some cardio. At the time, I'd just gotten my dog, Roxy, and in the mornings, I'd take her out in the snow and we'd run and do my cardio cardio so my day was just consumed every morning I was up at six I'd go to the gym go to work spend a full day at work then on the way home from work I would go to the gym again do my weight training then I'd come home feed my dog walk her prep all my food for the next day and it was just like I had this brilliant consistency I ended up doing that competition i ended up coming second in my first ever competition and even my mum said when i stepped out on stage she was so proud of me she said oh my god you could actually win this so following on from that competition i was just on a high i felt so good about myself i'd achieved so much and i wanted to do another competition so i continued in the same strength as i had i continued dieting for another six months and in that time, I broke up with the guy I'd been seeing, and in that time, I actually met Lex. Once I came second in my competition, people started asking me about my food and my diet, and I didn't really know what to say because I said, like, all I did was I ate chicken and I ate oats, and I had, like, a restricted, clean diet, clean. I remember being asked by someone about carb cycling and I didn't understand what they were talking about because I literally just looked at my food, would say there's a portion of sweet potato, a portion of chicken, a portion of veg and that was my, my meal but I didn't understand about the carbs, fats and protein breakdown so when someone asked me about my carbs I didn't know what to tell them because I was confused because I hadn't learned that so when I asked my coach what carbs I was meant to be taking in. He asked me, did I think I was a pro? Did I think I was professional or why did I need to know how many carbs I had to have in my diet? And it just made me feel really stupid and that like I assumed that I was some kind of pro bodybuilder and that I needed to know and that at my level and at my amateur level, I should just be eyeballing my food and just eat clean and then get the results. So when I met Lex, he was obviously a flexible dieter and I could not get my head around the fact that he could eat ice cream and he could eat chocolate 
and still get in shape because he looked amazing and he started explaining to me about IIFYM and about tracking your macros and to be honest I was very dubious about it and I had to just stick with my plan with my coach and I have my competition coming up and Lex was not going to distract me from my goals of winning the competition that I was entering and when I entered the competition I was determined to win. I'd come second in this competition last time. My focus, my goal was to win this competition. I looked amazing, but I just, I didn't look the same as the rest of the girls. I had big legs and I just didn't come in in the same kind of condition as these girls. So I came sixth in this competition and my heart was broken. I was just destroyed. And it was at this point where I turned to Lex and I was like, teach me about macros teach me about IIFYM. I broke away from my current coach and I started letting Lex coach me and teach me about macros so he gave me my macro breakdown. I started eating to hit my macros. It allowed me to have chocolate in my diet, it allowed me to have ice cream in my diet and that's where I became more comfortable with dieting and I had this control that I needed. Before I had the control in the way that all I would eat was clean but that restricted me in that I couldn't go out for meals with my friends I couldn't go out for to family events I arrived to family events with with Tupperware full of food because I couldn't eat what was being served whereas when I was with Lex he brought me to Nando's and I was able to eat the food in Nando's and not feel like oh no there's salt on that or oh no what's that sauce I was able to just put it into my fitness pal and track it so I had this control over my food and that was what saved me was that I was suddenly able to eat what I wanted and be creative with my food because I always had this creative streak in me I always felt this creativity but I couldn't do it because I was restricted and that obsession with clean eating it took a while for me to get past that so now we're bringing you up to the point where I started recording my YouTube videos and as you all know I have had times where I've struggled with binge eating in the past couple of years. The binge eating is different to what I had previously encountered. It wasn't the same as when I used to uh, binge and purge because the binge eating literally was just binge eating. I didn't use laxatives, I didn't throw up afterwards, I literally just ate a crap ton of food and it was through competing because I restricted myself in my macros so much that even though I was allowed to eat chocolate and I was allowed to eat these things if I went over my macros by like two grams I felt like I ruined the entire day so that was when it led to me having these binging sessions where it was like almost like an outer body experience where I was watching someone else eat all this food and it would happen every couple of days to the point where I just felt miserable again. At this point, I had decided to move to the UK, um, be with Lex full time. I quit my job and I started my YouTubing. I started my online coaching. So I, I felt like I had to be perfect, this perfect social media person. It was just another part of me that I was kind of hiding because I want to be this perfect person who always hits her macros and has the perfect washboard abs and has the perfect life in the UK with the perfect boyfriend. But in reality, I was like missing my friends and my family. I was really lonely. I had no friends over here whatsoever. And again, food became my comfort. And I suppose the binging came from that where I just felt when I felt sad, I would just eat a lot of food. Or even when I felt happy, I would eat a lot of food. It was like my way of rewarding myself as well as punishing myself. About two years ago, I sunk into a really low place. It was just before we got married. I just felt really shit about myself. I just felt really sad all the time. And I felt like, why do I feel this way? Like, the man I love wants to marry me. I'm, you know, living my best life online. In essence, I was just killing myself through binging every couple of days I was going into the pantry and eating my weight in food and just feeling really shitty about myself so it was like a never-ending cycle of binging and then trying to like cut my macros back so that was the point where I decided to get some external help and I got hypnotherapy which unraveled a lot of issues I had with my sister's death 
my cousin's death, my, my parents breaking up and a lot of issues that were there um, were, were holding me back from being happy. It was like every time I felt like I was getting to a good point in my life, I was sabotaging myself because I didn't feel like I deserved to be happy. And to be honest, recently I started to get those feelings again of inadequacy, those feelings, I, I've started overeating, not binging, but overeating. And I think that's why I've held out on doing this video for so long, because I felt like I had to be in this perfect mental place and this perfect physical place where I looked amazing and I could be like, hey, I went from that to that. But in essence, there is no perfect place to be at. And I wanted to make this video today because I've been through a lot and it is a constant struggle and even now the last couple of weeks I've just been in a really low place just because I feel quite lonesome, I feel quite alone and even though you might have this amazing perception of someone online it can still be a very lonely place on social media. And I guess right now that I've kind of come undone because I'd really like to start a family but we want to find a house first and I'm just after doing a competition and getting in an amazing shape and I was hoping to maintain that condition for as long as possible but over the last few weeks we've been traveling a lot and the weight has crept on again and it's not like I'm back to my original weight or back to where I originally ever was but I feel just kind of disappointed in myself and I just want to achieve so much and I've set my goals so high that sometimes I feel it's out of my reach and that the only control I have is through food. I'm making this video today because I'm saying that I've made an appointment to go back to my hypnotherapist next week to help me get through um, the issues I'm struggling with now and I'm not in a bad place but I'm in a place where I can recognize it now and recognize when I need a little bit of external help. I don't need medication or anything like that because I still go to the gym every day, I still eat healthily every day but there are days where I overeat and I just feel that I can nip that in the bud and I can get back to the place where I felt good about myself which I did last year and I feel like it is in me to get back there and now I'm able to recognize when I'm feeling crappy about myself. So I know this has been like a really super long video. If you've gotten to this point, well done. I'm very proud of you. And I just wanted to share my, my story with you guys because I haven't before. And because I suppose I feel like I am a normal person and even though I'm online and I share my life with you, doesn't mean that I'm not a normal person who's been through normal things and most people have if they act if you actually talk to them most people have had some kind of issue with food at some point like i've overcome my eating disorder and i'm getting to grips with where i'm at now and being able to see when i need a little bit of help and i need a little bit of comforting from someone external i just hope that my video will help some of you guys who are going through similar experience and either it's a breakup or a death in the family or something you just need to deal with the emotions in a way that doesn't revolve around food feeling empty or feeling full that you have a healthy relationship with food and that's all i want is that i can enjoy food and still reach my goals in the fitness industry um, do competitions and still feel good about myself without it being an obsession. So if you like the video Please give it a thumbs up. I feel really inappropriate saying that about this kind of video because it was a hard video for me to Make but make sure to subscribe if you'd like to see more of my other videos Most of my videos are much more uplifting and happy because I normally talk about positivity and how you can get through these rough patches and that's what I will be focusing on and I just want you to take something from all my videos and learn something and learn from my mistakes and that's what I'm doing I'm sharing my life not because it's perfect because it's imperfect like everyone else's so I'm gonna leave it there guys thanks for watching if you watched this far and if you have any questions or comments or want any encouragement or need any advice, just hit me up in the comments below. Cause if I only had a hundred fans, I'd take them all to dinner, talk about the people that we used to be. If I had a hundred fans, I'd buy them all the